Okay, so let's put some of this into practice with some examples that we've got here to try and show some of these kind of interesting sort of number theory facts that we've got here. So the first one is to show that 23 to the power of 753 is congruent to 1 mod 11. Now this is the same thing as saying show that the remainder of 23 to the power of 753 when divided by 11 is 1 because remember this is kind of like the remainder of something that would be left over. Now if you wanted to try this on your calculator this won't fit on your calculator. 23 to the power of 753 is absolutely crazy and it won't fit on the calculator. So the first trick that we've got here is to use congruence with 1 or minus 1 along with an ex uh, uh, exponentiation. Now, if you remember for exponentiation, which we have here, we've said that this is, this is always going to be true. You can put both sides to the same power, and it is still true. So actually, let's just do what we know to begin with with this one. Let's say what we know about 23. We know that 23 is congruent to 1 mod 11. And we know that 23 is congruent to 1 mod 11 because of the fact that, um, obviously, 23 is 1 more than 22. So there's that remainder of 1 then. Now, underneath this, we can put both sides to the power of 753. And we know that that would be true. So therefore, it is congruent to 1 to the power of 753. And 753, 1 to the power of 753, this is why this trick is to do it with 1 or minus 1. Because we know that 1 to the power of 753 is just 1. So I can write, hence, 23 to the power of 753 is congruent to 1 mod 11. And you'll notice here that I've actually kind of written it as with kind of like multiple signs as we go, because this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this, therefore this is congruent to this one. And that is an application of what we had said here of this kind of transitive idea that if this is congruent to this, this is congruent to this, then the first is congruent to the last one. So we are allowed to write things with kind of multiple um, sort of these symbols, these congruent symbols as we go. So that's tip number one. Now the second thing is that if the power is small that we've got here, use congruence with small numbers along with an ex exponentiation. So you'll see what I mean when we put this into practice and I'll explain why this trick has kind of been phrased in this way. So it's kind of asked in a different way. It says find the remainder when it's divided by 11. That's the same kind of thing that we're talking about here. So what we're going to try and do is we're actually trying to say what is 343 to the power of 5 congruent to mod 11. Well, let's begin by thinking, what is 343 congruent to? Well, somewhere else on your page, you might just do your kind of um, your division algorithm for this so that we know that 343 is equal to, let's on my calculator, I'll divide it by 11. So it is equal to 31 lots of 11. And then here's going to be the remainder part. So 31 times 11 is 341. So there's a remainder of 2. So that means that 343 is congruent to 2 mod 11. I'm just going to do one here where you don't have to write brackets because it's not essential to write those brackets around mod 11. And now this is what I mean by this, that if the power is small, so this is only a power of five, this was a huge power, you can use the congruence with small numbers. So in this case, two is a small number, and we can just use exponentiation. So if I'm now going to do 343 to the power of five, I know that that will be congruent to two to the power of five. Now two to the power of five is 32. Two times two times two times two times two is 32. And now 32, we can work out what that is congruent to mod 11, because if you do 32, if we take away 22 from that, because we know that 2 lots of 11 is 22, we know that that is congruent to 10 mod 11. So then we can say, hence, there is a remainder, hence there is a remainder of 10 when divided by 11. So that's that second trick. Big number here, make it what it's actually congruent to. We can raise that small number because it was small, we can raise it to a small power. And then we can do some calculations with that. And again, you've got this kind of long list of it. And you know what, I probably will be doing it always with brackets, but I did just want to show you that it doesn't always have to be done with brackets there.
So now we're going to have a look at one that uses, in fact, we're going to look at two that has a third trick. Now, this third trick says that if the power is too big, manipulate your initial congruence to get back to a congruence with one or minus one. So trick three is kind of combining these two things that we've got here. We're going to have something with a very big power. So here, power of 50 is too big to be able to do like two to the power of 50 or something. So it's too big there. And equally, this three, 513 is not going to be something that is congruent with one or minus one. So we're going to have to try and kind of manipulate these two things together we've got here. And it wants us to find out the final digit in this number that we've got here. Now, the final digit of a number, if you think about what this means, this is the same thing as saying as find the remainder when it's divided by 10, right? It's the same thing as saying find the remainder of when it is divided by 10, because that's obviously going to be the units part that you have left over. In other words, we're trying to say, what is it congruent to mod 11, uh, mod 10, excuse me. So what we're going to do is we'll start off with the 513 without the power. Now, 513 is obviously congruent to 3, mod 10 that we've got here and we don't want to do 513 to the power of 50 to say that's congruent to 3 to the power of 50 because in a calculator if you do 3 to the power of 50 it is huge you're not going to be able to deal with this it's this number and you're just not going to be able to deal with that so this is where we're going to have to try and do something different with this 3 that we've got here to try and get us back to a congruence with 1 or minus 1 mod 10 that we've got. So I'm going to get rid of this line for a second. Now think to yourself with powers of 3. Can you do something with a power of 3 that will get you close to a multiple of 10? It could either be 1 above or 1 below. Well, the one that we're going to be looking for is this. 3 squared. 3 squared is obviously congruent to 9 because they're the same as each other, which is congruent to minus 1 mod 10 because 9 is congruent to minus 1. If you think about the fact that we kind of subtract those, it's obviously going to be a 10. So this is great. We've now got that 3 squared is congruent to minus 1. So I'm going to write this down under here, that 3 squared is congruent to minus 1. And I want to get to 3 to the power of 50. So let's write this down now. We're going to go over here. And there's loads of different ways. You don't have to do it exactly the way I'm doing it. So 513 to the power of 50 is going to be congruent to 3 to the power of 50. Now I'm going to try and think about what this 3 to the power of 50 is going to be. I better keep writing mod 10 every line. Well, 3 squared to the power of 25 is 3 to the power of 50, and 3 squared is congruent to minus 1. So this must be congruent to minus 1 to the power of 25. Now, if you do minus 1 to the power of 25, will you get plus 1 or will you get minus 1? You will get minus 1. So this means that we have that 3 to the power of 50 is congruent to minus 1. So we can say, hence, 513 to the power of 50 is congruent to 3 to the power of 50, which is congruent to minus 1 mod 10. Now, it does say what is the final digit in the answer. So we don't really want to say that it's going to be congruent to minus 1, do we? We need to think what else is minus 1 congruent to. And we know that minus 1 is congruent to 9. So we can say that it's congruent to 9. So the last digit is 9. So we've got quite a lot of like logic of all of these bits. I guess I could have done this all in one single line. I said I could have said this is congruent to this, which 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 is congruent to this. But it doesn't really matter. You're kind of sort of breaking it down into all of these different stages that we've got. So this is another application of trick number three, which is to kind of examine the fact that this is too big a power. And if we do 19 mod 12, we get 7, and 7 is not a 1 or a minus 1, and it's too big. It's just going to be absolutely huge. So we're finding the remainder when it's divided by 12. That means we want to find out what is it congruent to mod 12. So let's begin by looking at the base. 19 is congruent to... That's just going to be congruent to 7, isn't it? 19 is congruent to 7 mod 12. And what we're trying to do is this logic. We're trying to do 19 to the power of 273. So it's really going to be the same as 7 to the power of 273. But the trouble is, 7 to the power of 273 is going to be too huge. So we're going to use this trick, trying to find something that is congruent with 1 or minus 1. 
with seven? Well, seven, let's think about how it could be one or minus one with a multiple of 12. Well, seven squared is 49 and 49 mod 12 is one. Now, how do I know that? Well, obviously I know my 12 times table and 12 times table goes 12, 24, 36, 48. So it's one more than 48 which is why it is mod 12 like this. I want to see if I can do this one, like I was kind of describing up here. I'll see if I can do it in one logical line that we've got. So seven to the power of 273. Well, that is going to be seven. I don't know if I do want to do it in one line. I might do it afterwards. I'm going to keep working down here, I think. So I'm trying to get to seven to the power of 273. So seven squared to the power of, I'm not going to be able to get it to 273 because of the fact that it's squared. So if I do 273 divided by 2, that's 136 and a half. So I'll do it to the power of 136. So that means that 7 to the power of, what's that going to be, 272 is therefore congruent to 1 to the power of 136, which is just congruent to 1 mod 12. So now I've said that 7 to the power of 272 is congruent to 1. So 7 to the power of 272 times by 7, that is 7 to the power of 273. That will just be congruent to this thing. These are all going to get multiplied by 7. So it's going to be congruent to a 1 multiplied by a 7, which is just a 7 mod 12. So I'm going to take this statement that we've got over here, and I'm now saying that 19 to the power of 273 is congruent to 7 to the power of 273, which is congruent to what we've got written down here, which is congruent to 7. So I'm going to say, hence, it is congruent to 7. So we're going to just answer the question. The remainder when it was divided by 12 is 7. Let's put a line there. So the remainder... when divided by 12 is 7. So the difference between these two was this one was just you could really quickly get to that power of 50 just because 50 was an even number. So we had the squared times the 25. They're not always going to be squared. It just happened to be squared in both of them. In this case, the thing that was different was that we wanted 273, but that was an odd number. We could get to 272 by raising everything to the power of 136. And obviously 1 to the power of 136 is just 1. So these two things were the same as each other. And then all we needed to do to this congruence was multiply them both by 7, so that 7 to the 273 was congruent to 7, hence the remainder was 7. And I just think that's pretty cool, because if you put 19 to the power of 273 on your calculator, you get math error, because it literally can't handle it. But we've now been able to work out that when you take this huge number and divide it by 12, you'd have 7 left over. And this is really kind of the heart of what number theory is. It's like being able to know that these things are true without ever having to work out this number and do any division. And, and knowing stuff like this, like what's the, the final digit going to be when you raise something to the power of a very high number? There are other ways of doing this one, but this is we're doing it using um, the kind of congruent stuff. There are other patterns that you could think of with this, and I'll leave you to think about that, but definitely not something how I would want you to answer it for FP2. And now our final one that we're going to try, we're doing a remainder when it's divided by 15. In other words, what's it going to be when we do it as mod 15? We are going to do trick number four, which is to perform modular arithmetic on each part separately. And this is the application of these kinds of things that we said here. We talked about how you can perform modular arithmetic on each part separately. So we're literally just going to do that for some of these kinds of questions here. It says, find the remainder when one factorial plus two factorial plus three factorial all the way up to 100 factorial is divided by 15. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, what is 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus 3 factorial plus plus 100 factorial going to be congruent to mod 15? Well, 1 is just going to be congruent to 1. 2 is just going to be congruent to 2. 3 factorial is 6, so that's just going to be congruent to 6. 4 factorial is 24. So we're just going to say that it's 24. But then when we get to 5 factorial and 6 factorial onwards, notice what we get. 5 factorial 
is, let's write it the way I would normally do, is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And so because of the fact that 5 factorial has a 5 and a 3 in it, we know that 15 is a factor of 5 factorial. In other words, 15 divides 5. So what this means is, is that 5 factorial is congruent to 0 mod 15. And similarly, if we do 6 factorial, it is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And because it's being multiplied by a 5 and a 3, it means that it is a multiple of 15. In other words, 15 divides 6 factorial, and so 6 factorial is congruent to 0 mod 15. And in fact, any number factorial uh, is going to be congruent to 0 mod 15 if n is greater than or equal to 5. So that means that all of these next parts are just going to be plus 0, plus 0, plus 0 for our last one, plus 0. And I should write in brackets that this is mod 15. So we get that it's congruent to uh, what is this? 1 plus 2 plus 6. Well, 24 mod 15. If I just do 24, take away 15, I get 9. So it's 1 plus 2 plus 6 plus 9. I might need to move this around a bit. And now I can squeeze it in and I'll put an extra line in. And so what's that? 1 plus 2 plus 6 plus 9. 1 plus 2 plus 6 plus 9. That's 18. And we know that 18 is going to be congruent to a three that we've got here. I'm going to move this and I'll, I'll reduce the size of it in a second so it doesn't overlap. And that is therefore congruent to a three that we've got. Okay, so we can just answer the question and now say that the remainder will be the remainder is three. Now when I finish this video, I'll take this here, I'll make it smaller so that it's not going to overlap any of this stuff. But for now, I'll just remind us of the tricks. So we can either get things towards a one or a minus one, and then we can use exponentiation. If the power is small, like in this one, we had trick number two, didn't matter that it didn't go to a one or minus one because we could do two to the power of five. The third trick is probably going to be a common kind of one. that If the power is too big, find something that will manipulate it to a one or a minus one. So here we did three squared to get to a minus one. We did a seven squared to get to a mod one and then manipulate from there. And then our fourth one is probably the easiest one. It's just perform the modular arithmetic on each part separately so that I could say these parts kind of all dropped out here. And this was this extra fact that we had. So I loved this bit. I think this bit's really fascinating to kind of do these. And you can try it in your calculator. It's not going to work. You have to do this using number theory stuff instead. So you can try exercise 1C now. Try and use these tricks. They don't mention these tricks in the textbook. I've come up with these myself as hopefully all of the ways that you can try and answer these questions. So in the next video, we'll be doing some stuff to do with divisibility tests.